You're watching the buck stops here. The Home Minister is in the Kashmir Valley trying a political outreach, even tweeting that his doors at the Nehru Guest House are open for anyone who wants to meet him, that is anyone who believes in Kashmiriyat, Insaniyat or Jamuriyat. In the meantime, Mehbooba Mufti's statement that only 5% of Kashmir is actually instigating trouble in fact reinforces what one of her ministers, Sajad Lone, said in an interview to me where he said only 5% of the valley are out on the streets. These are statements that have been roundly criticized by the opposition who wants to know why there is 47 days of lockdown and curfew if this is only about 5% people of the Kashmir Valley. How should we read these statements? How should we read the Chief Minister saying that children are being used by protesters as literally as shields? And how should we see the Home Minister's outreach? Joining us now in the studio is our newsmaker tonight, Muzaffar Beg. He's a senior leader of the PDP. He represented the party at the all-party meeting chaired by the Prime Minister in Delhi, made a number of headline-grabbing statements at that all-party meeting as well. Wakes up first Rajnath Singh on Twitter before going to Srinagar says anyone who believes in Kashmiriyat, Insa Insaniyat, Jamuriyat is welcome to meet me. I saw it as a statement of intent but we know Kashmir. Aisa to nahi hai ki Huriyat darwaze pe pohon jayegi. Huriyat in fact is under house arrest. How did you see that uh, that particular open-ended offer? Well this is all that the Home Minister can do. Huriyat is not willing even if they are invited formally through a letter, they will not be prepared at this stage to respond to a request to meet him. Uh, saying that people who believe in, Huri, in Saniyat and Jamuriyat and Kashmiriyat are welcome, but there are some people who believe in Pakistaniyat. Oh, there is a fourth element here. That's interesting word. And, uh, Pakistaniyat. Pakistaniyat. Unka kya so those people will not be willing to meet us unless they have some sort of consent from the Pakistani establishment and I'm afraid also from the militant organizations who are op operating in Pakistan like lashkar e and others. So I think there's a tall order to expect that simply because Home Minister says if you believe in these three fundamental principles of public policy or public morality then you should come and meet. That's, how that's sig how large is the constituency today that you believe believes in Pakistaniyat with whom the Home Minister will therefore hit a dead end? There is no way to find that out except referendum. But referendum is constitutionally not possible. There is a way of judging it by the ele electoral process. In ele electoral processes, I don't know how many people who really believe in Pakistan should come and vote in favor of us who take an oath under the Indian constitution. But 70, 75% do that. Hmm. That's as high as can be in any state of How Europe. would you define the Hurriyat conference? You said there are people who believe in Pakistaniyat. I find this a very interesting new word in our Kashmir lexicon. Which is the entire Hurriyat conference then? Somebody you'd say believes in Pakistaniyat. Are there sections of it that can be engaged with? Sections of it, but they dominate it. Pakistaniyat dominates the Hurriyat conference. Pakist Gilani uh, Sahab, he dominates the, uh, the tribe at the moment. At the moment, the three relevant people are Gilani Sahab, Moli Farooq and Yasir Malik Sahab. I think Yasir Malik in his heart wants an independent Kashmir. But instead of uh, saying that, he would like to go with the process of deaccession. I call these people not secessionists. Hmm. But the reverse, to want reverse, reverse yeah. accession, yeah. yeah, that's what they want to do. I I believe that uh, 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 the only plausible way, in which a pragmatic way, in which we can ascertain who, where is the majority, is the democratic process. The elections. The elections. If they could participate in the elections. Even if you know, they, they, they say that we have to take an oath under the Indian constitution. There are many countries in the world who take an oath under the constitution and yet they, they stick their own demands. That happened in Ireland. Mm. That used to happen in Ireland. So, but that's something that route they will not take. So it will always be within the realm of speculation and guesswork who co has so, the majority. So let me ask you about one of your statements that made a lot of headlines. We've spoken to you about it. You actually at the all-party meeting spoke about a kind of rising 
a radicalization of an Islamism, of a jihadism. And you said if this drift continues, an ISIS ideology could take root. Yes. Do you stand by that statement? I stand by this. Islamic ideology has swept over the entire Arab world. Even, even, even Turkey is a victim of it, which otherwise was supposed to be a very liberal. What is its impact in the Kashmir Valley today? Kashmir Valley cannot be immune from that influence. Even Pakistan will one day, if this continues, Pakistan will be a victim of that kind of extremist ideology itself. Kashmir cannot be immune from it. And uh, there is no way to stop it because of the modern media connection the world the is internet connected. generation in a way. I think the younger generation I'm talking of, I'm not talking of the, the classically known secessionists or the accessionists. I don't think but, they will But, but let me ask you this. Do you believe, because when I put this to the National Conference President, he said, but the calls from the masjid is for Azadi, not for ISIS. Do you believe the boys out on the street today? Yes. Are they Islamists, as a Tavleen Singh suggests, or are they Islamized today? Is this now more a religious, in your estimation, mm. is this now a more religious sentiment on the streets of the valley, or is it still a political insurgency or a political separatism? There is a subtle undercurrent here involved. You see, when people speak of Azadi, they don't mean the same thing. Azadi means one thing for Gilani Saab, another thing for, for, for his uh, other partners mm. like Yasin Malik. When these young people raise the slogans of Azadi or Pakistan, they may uh, want to join Pakistan, but for what reason? Earlier, it used to be for political reasons. But now for these younger generations, Pakistan means an Islamic state. So there is that religious undertone which is driving these young people more than it used to drive earlier generation, the older generation. For and you actually it, see the ISIS ideology not far? I, if, if India, Pakistan and Afghanistan don't join hands, and this is a tall order, I see that the, that ideology will creep in. ISIS. ISIS ideology will come to Pakistan, Afghanistan, and it will also penetrate Kashmir. You were quoted as saying, and this is, has to be your most controversial remark, that there are boys today who for an education at a madrasa and two pairs of a kurta pajama are ready to join jihad, in quotes. For, for two pairs of a kurta uh, pajama? Barkha, you know that this uh, meeting, all, part, all parties meeting, was off the, uh, uh, the record. There were no, there were no journalists mm. over there. There was no briefing as I done by, of, of all who said what. So, this news appeared in a local newspaper in Kashmir. I will not name that newspaper. It is not proper to do so. That this is what I said. How did that person get that information? There was no journalist. So, there must have been someone in the meeting who must have briefed that newspaper. Who, do you, who are you uh, alluding to? I don't want to name Which that party? person. Which party? The only uh, party. People who were present there were not national conference. There were so you're alluding to the Congress. Someone from the Congress. So the Congress, the then Congress you would mean Gulam Nabi Azad. So I, I, would I, will, I, would, I, will I would know enough of Kashmir to know your references no, to Mr. I will Azad. Not, I will not name any person. And I will not say, well, this is a false statement. I will go to vote. What did you actually say? I said that how did this trouble start? Uh, the t terrorism, the, the birth of terrorism in Pakistan. It started with the war between the so-called democratic world and the communist world in Afghanistan. The result was that thousands and perhaps lakhs of uh, young boys and girls became orphans. They had nowhere to go. They lived in poor tents where temporary madrasas were set up. They hardly had what we call uh, you know, a good or decent life. The maximum that they could be uh, offered there was meals and two kurta pajas, pajamas on two occasions of Eid. And those young boys and girls were told that you are not fighting a war from, for America or against Russia, but that you are fighting it for the, for the cause of Islam, for the cause of Jihad, and for the cause of Jannat. Hmm. I said if that kind of ideology travels through Pakistan, especially in the light of the, the emerging is the international ideology of of ISIS, then there is a danger 
that we will have the same experiment duplicated in the state of Jubin. Okay, so you believe that that statement of yours was distorted or oversimplified. Distorted and for political purposes. For political by purposes. a Congress leader present at the all-party meeting whom you won't name. Okay, now your party's chief minister, leader of uh, uh, and chief minister of the state, Mehbooba Mufti, another minister in the ca uh, state cabinet, Sajad Loon, they have come up with this figure. 5% of the valley is instigating trouble. 5% is out on the streets. Bek Sahib, it could be asked that if this is only 5%, why is the valley in lockdown and curfew for 47 days? You yourself use the word instigators, 5%. I think the statement of the minister and Babu Bhaji needs to be explained. How many, what's the percentage of the people who are out on the street with stones in their hands? They are talking about that percentage. Srinagar is 15 lakh about population. 5% of that is 75,000 people mm. who are on the streets with stones in their hands. 75,000 people is not an ordinary figure. You have been a student of history, I believe. Look at the Russian Revolution, Iranian Revolution, or the, or the revolution in the Arab worlds. Not more than 5 to 7% people were out on the streets. If such a agitation where only 5% take you know, stores in their hands. If this is continued over a sustained period of time, it can result in, 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 in a revolution. These 5% are the agitators on the streets. How much population which sits at home sympathizes with them, I and you cannot guess. That's what maybe, I want to ask maybe you. Maybe the majority of the people may be behind them. There is no way of knowing that. So hang on, but, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, you are saying 5% are the number that is out holding the stones, maybe protesting, even less. maybe even less, maybe even less. Yes. but that does not mean that only 5% support them, it could even be 90, 50%, 50%, 60%, be. 60%, 90%, 90%, we don't know, we don't. what would be your estimation? Do, I, do I, they have widespread I, support I, I, or is I, it a handful of people to use the phrase see, the chief I minister I have an used? estimation based on my personal experience, I live in the countryside, I know the mentality of the rural population, the rural population is not militant. Now, I think that it, it's, it's a very uh, invidious remark that was made one of the most uh, admirable politicians of Kashmir, that maybe these people have the permission of their parents. Is this Omar Abdullah said that to me. I don't want to the name children, it, yes, that The children, children are may reflecting have, the rage of may, their parents. Their parents. Yes. They may be, yes. they may be uh, maybe, he said, does it occur to Mahbubha Mufti that the parents don't want to stop them? I think that is somewhat cynical and unjust remark. No parents, parents may want the children to go on the streets, but not their own children. Nobody wants his child to go and become a victim of the pellet gun mm -hmm. or, or a rifle gun. So, uh, my uh, belief is that overwhelming majority of the people support the agitation, but they don't support the stone throwing process. So, hmm. they support the sentiment, the sentiment, the but separatist, the, the Azadi sentiment. Uh, not, not necessarily Azadi. Some set, see the, the, the problem in Kashmir is not whether Azadi are banning with India. There are sh various solutions in between. Autonomy, uh, self-rule, so self -rule. on. Autonomy, yes. self-rule. They do not want to hear from the people of India, especially members of Sankh Parivar, that Article 370 will be abrogated. They do not want to hear that Kashmir should lose its own flag. They don't want to hear that Muslims will be killed because they, their religion permits beef eating. They do not want to hear that the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir should be abrogated. There are various kind of grievances which come together and result in an agitation. There is a certain section of population who straightway want Pakistan. Some do not want Pakistan. Some want an adjustment in terms of Article 2 of Constitution of India and Article 370 of Constitution of India, they want that the autonomy which was guaranteed to us by the Constitution and Article 370 should be so, so, so a majority, the majority of the people, see majority why not? Because 370, Congress supports it, NC supports it, we support so, it, that constitutes the so majority, majority, majority of, of the people, people in the valley in your estimation support the maybe the anger, the sense of vulnerability about the identity, yes. Kashmiri identity being under siege, but not the use of stones. That's what I'm hearing you say. Yes. Then wouldn't the alliance itself with the BJP eventually become 
a millstone around the neck of the PDP. Beg sahab, let's be realistic because beef politics they will associate with the BJP. This high pitched debate around nationalism they will associate with the BJP. This 370 abrogation is with the BJP. Isn't the alliance part of the problem then? Uh, Barka, I have always, to the best of my integrity, I have been candid with you always. Today also I say that when we uh, framed the uh, or formed the government with the BJP, my at least belief was, not only a, a prayer belief was, that uh, Modi who has risen from nowhere and has faced many, so many ordeals must have the courage to take the bull by the horn and come to a settlement. If not necessarily with Pakistan, come to settlement with the mainstream parties. Hmm. You see, Pakistan settlement is a later issue. Have but a domestic dialogue process on yes, Kashmir. Come to a settlement. Mm -hmm. But even on the if, alliance. Even, even if you don't have a settlement with secessionists, have settlement with the uh, local parties. On the alliance? Uh, on the alliance. Is the alliance see, proving to be no, a problem for the PDP? Unfortunately, this was only written on paper. It was a promise given to the ears of the people and broken to their heart. During, during all this period, not a single step has been taken in terms of the political agenda of the alliance. The result is that while BGP may retain its constituency in Jammu, but PDP will be discredited. It is already being discredited in Kashmir. So it will be a great tragedy, not only for PDP, but for all mainstream parties, if their demand that you settle this issue through dialogue is not taken to So let me let me clear. now understand because you're making a very important point. You're saying when the alliance first came together, you believe the prime minister's mandate would enable big change, a watershed moment in the valley. You have been disappointed because the alliance of agreement, the agenda of alliance has not been executed, has not been implemented. You believe the BJP has not politically lost, but the PDP has been discredited by the alliance. It has been discredited not by the alliance, then but by the failure of the alliance to take any concrete step on the political agenda of dialogue and settlement of Kashmir problem on Article 370 on the constitutional identity or Kashmiri and of Kashmiris. Do you believe therefore the alliance was a mistake? No, it was not a mistake. I, am, uh, I still believe that BJP and Prime Minister, not for the sake of Kashmiris, not for the sake of his own party, but for the sake of his own, his own nation they will take concrete steps, at least settle the dispute with the mainstream parties, he consolidate them, empower them. Then he, 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 the, the, the secessionists or the secessionists may follow you or may not follow you, but at least you have some moral ground to the would world you, would you, that, uh, that we have dis resolved it with all those people who are willing to would talk. You, would you advise Mehbooba Mufti to stay the course of the alliance or would you advise her for the sake of political longevity for the party to, 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 to break it? Well, I, I would say that if the purpose for which the alliance was the reason they thought, the reason, the purpose for which this alliance was formed, if that uh, purpose is not solved, not because of inaction, but because of a deliberate policy of BJP or Sang Parivar, then I would be a person who would like to walk out of this alliance. And has that moment come? No, not yet. How much time would you give it? I don't uh, set any deadlines. A beginning has been made. I think today, uh, Home Minister has gone. It's not a new process. I think he's touching base with the agenda of alliance. I think he is now looking at the agenda of alliance and finding ways of how to implement it. Let me ask you a last question as we close. Do you believe in 2010 when Omar Abdullah was chief minister, he made mistakes in handling the agitation. He had to admit to those mistakes later. Do you believe that Mehbooba Mufti has made similar mistakes by not talking quick enough, by not being visible enough, by being in somewhat of a shell? She's only started speaking in the last week or so. Mahbuba took over power uh, a few months back. And before she could really start talking, this Barhan incident took Happen. place. Before him, Mufti Saab made a point of implementation of agenda on every available occasion. Yes. But there were no listeners. And there now, were no takers. How do you think she is? But I this? think that this, this uh, tragic incident in Kashmir, which has a national impact, this must go BJP into a rethinking mode. Yeah. That it's not that they have to reinvent the wheel, 
they only have to implement what has been promised in the agenda. Of the and you're saying if that doesn't happen, at some point you would then tell Mehbooba Mufti the alliance isn't worth it. I will not tell her, but if she asks my, my opinion and she says BJP doesn't want to live up its side of the bargain, I will say then the bargain is not worth the paper on which it is written. If she asks for my opinion, that's the opinion I will give. Candid words from you as ever, Muzaffar Beg. A pleasure to have you on the Buckstops here today. Thank, Thank you so much. And that is it on the program tonight. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.